So there's nothing more exciting than when your son calls you up, says, hey dad, I just got access to 30 acres of private land to hunt on. Can you come give me a hand, help me figure out how to hunt this piece of property, do some scouting with me? So I was like, yeah, sure. Send me the location, I'll look at the maps. Now, my son just turned 29. I was super happy when my son got into shooting a bow and I was even more happy that he started getting addicted to archery hunting. Anyway, so he sent me the location of his property. I looked at the maps. Now I have to admit, after looking at the map and an aerial view of this property, I was a little bit worried about what kind of deer we were gonna see. Now I knew for sure this property would hold does, and I was thinking the only bucks we might see on that property are bucks that are passing through maybe late archery season, or during the rut. And there was only one way to find out, and that was to go scout it and see what's going on. About 30 acres, I'd say about a little less than half of it is this open field. Now right here, we have a lot of doe traffic. They come right up through the corner of the property that we're walking towards now. They're coming in the, in the morning. They'll go back out, and then later in the evening, they'll do the same thing. Okay, so we got the road up here, which is the only access to this property. And then down here to the south, got a good chunk of hardwoods. It's pretty thick in there. And we're going to get to that. We're going to go down and check that out as well. Now you already have some stands set up. It's your first tree stand location? Yes, sir. I had... Uh, all kinds of sagging branches all the way down through here so at the end of last season i really only had one small shooting lane and they had to be right up against the trees i came in probably three weeks ago i took out all these branches and a couple dead trees you can definitely see where they're using it as a heavy traffic area um, especially down the tree lines and then also through the brush you can see where they're kind of We'll show you how they're making their way down through there. Looks like it'll stay green in here for quite a while through archery season. Lots of grass and clothes to eat. We do have a trail right here. You can see it right through this little bit of a weedy area where they come all across the road straight down through here. Yeah, that's a pretty heavy one too. I'll tell you what, this little patch of woods right here in front of me, if they're not coming in from your first stand location and they come in that trail we were just at and walk down this tree line, that you can get a perfect shot in there. So at this point it was late August and I knew we were late getting into the game to scout this property. And when I got there, took an initial glance at the property, I was thinking, man, it's going to be tough to get on deer on this property because you had private property surrounding this whole 30 acres, and the only access was from the main highway. So I thought, okay, we're gonna start on the east side of this property on the top side, where all the does are coming in, where you're frequently seeing does. Start there and work our way around the whole perimeter of the property from east to west. So we got to the east side of the property, and we could see where all the does were coming in, and I noticed there was a real heavy trail where the deer are coming from the north down the mountain, and they're crossing the road, and they're coming into this 30 acres. Super heavy trail, you can tell it was being used all the time. So we followed that trail down the tree line, and to the west, smack in the middle of this field, there's a patch of woods, and there was a bunch of buck rubs in there. There was fresh deer scat, and I could tell right off the bat that those deer were coming into this property, walking down the tree line past this little patch of woods. So in this patch of woods, there was a perfect tree. I thought, well, that'd be a good spot to put a tree stand in. Also, maybe put a trail camera on that tree line, see if there's any bucks traveling through here. So we marked that spot, set up a trail camera, and we put a mock scrape in. So if you're up in this tree, you can get a perfect shot right out here to this tree line, whether they're coming up or down. i would never see you in there. Another reason that'd be a good spot is because you can walk out the top road, come down the side here and come straight in. Even got some old rubs here. Over there, there's some more rubs. Yep, 
if there's bucks in here, they're probably sneaking in during the nighttime or super early in the morning. Speaking of those trail cameras, we could throw one up here just we'll see if anything's crossing down through here. What do you think about right here? It looks like an old walnut tree. Looks like we're gonna be out of the over you look like we're gonna be too high. What do you think? That's pretty good. Once your camera's set, I wouldn't walk through this spot because we're gonna put a scrape in right here. If you guys are gonna be walking up and down this specific trail right here, there's no point putting a scraper your camera here. I'd try to walk around it if you could. I want to try to get a little bit of weight on this branch to bring it down a little bit. Like right here. What are you doing that for? Just out of curiosity? Well, because if they have fawns, they'll be able to touch it too. Any deer that comes by here will be able to touch it. And if it's right here in their face when they're walking down the trail, they're going to hit it. The only thing is you might have to get some scent in here. Do you got to pee? No. That looks like an old four-wheeler path. Yeah, this is one of the old roads. That stand would be good for if you have a north wind. They're coming down along the bottom. There's no way they're walking across this field. They might be up top eating a little bit, but they'll come down through to the south. And that's probably how they're getting over to the other property and the private property on the bottom. All right, so we made it to the bottom side of this property where everything above us all field there's a couple patches of woods and now we're gonna start digging we're gonna get into the bottom in the hardwoods and it gets really thick in here so let's go see what we can find that's definitely a deer trail boy this is crazy look at this definitely needed my boots look at that can you see where we're at on the property this is rough, a rough estimate. We're about right here. My tree stand last year. We're going down there. Well, hold on a second. Let's talk about this. We need to if, go down there. If we finish this trail out, I gotta see what's going on here. Let's do it. Oh yeah, I see why. You're right. And we found some bedding. question is what? Yeah, right there, see? Using this. That's a fresh bed, too. Got hair everywhere. And it's matted down. So once we got to the southeast side of the property, started noticing a heavy deer trail following the bottom of the field right along the tree edge. So we started heading west along that tree edge, got about halfway up the field, halfway to the middle of this property, and there was a super heavy trail going down into the thickets. Took about 10 or 15 steps into those thickets, and it looked like a good spot where we could find some deer bedding. Now at this point, I wasn't convinced that there was any bucks in this spot. Now the first set of bedding that we found looked like all doe bedding. So we went in a little bit further, and about another 20 or 30 yards, we found more bedding. Started running into some rubs, a couple of scrapes, fresh tracks, fresh scat. And the further west we moved, the more buck sign we were finding. There's another bedding. Another bedding spot. There's an old historical rub right there. And over here is a rub from last year. It's a small one, but at least we're finally seeing sign. Let's get over to that far west corner, southwest corner. And where we came down through, we saw a couple of rubs. Yeah, those are fresh tracks. Are you kidding me? You have blueberries in here? All right, there's more bedding. It's a fresh trail. All right, there's a fresh bed, too. 
beds everywhere. There's one, two, three. There's another bed. It's four. There's a ton of beds in here. All right, there's another trail. Fresh track. Boy, they're in here pretty heavy. I'm actually thinking that right here is a good setup. You got some shooting lanes. Right here is bedding. The problem with that is if you're going to hunt this spot, it's getting into it. Getting in here super early before they get back here to their beds. The question is, also, I like to climb, so what, what am I climbing here? All right, there's a heavy trail. Look, right here. Got bedding right there. Be a tough one to get in, but you can come down that clearing right up there. Come around the back, and you can sneak up this tree right here. And look, behind you. Got room to shoot, good clearing. And in front of you. You have to get rid of this. Wow, look at this. What's that? Yeah, so if you would see that tree line up there? Yeah. You can come right down there, sneak in the back, and right up your tree, and not even touch that petting area. Should I throw a camera up or what? I would. We'll clear this spot, set up the camera. So we have a trail that comes right down through this tree you're gonna put your stand in. The trail splits off. Behind us is bedding. Another 75 yards to the north, there's another bedding area. You'll be able to sneak right in through the back here. I just want to put a camera up, see what's down here. Let's set it up back there in that tree. Got yours. That looks like it's about pretty old, bud. Oh, somebody was in here. What does that say? Buck bomb. That's probably six those, years old. Those and asterisks. All right. I put it right here in this tree. We got a trail here. Trail to the south. A couple trails right here to the north. Oh, this is a good spot. I should probably get up just a hair higher. Let's see what it does. I'm gonna try not to blow deer out of here when you come in. You got all that bedding over here to your east. I think we should get a mock scrape going here, right on this trail. And then don't come in here. I wouldn't come in past your cameras. And be careful when you're coming down that trail. Get yourself some spray. For, keep your scent down. I want to set up a good mock scrape right here. I didn't bring any rope. Shoot. Got any rope in your pocket? Nothing in there? Nope. Well, that one smells like poison. Great. Oops. You setting that up just something to yep. wave in their face or what? Yep. Cause you got that clearing right there. That's how you're gonna access this, right? There's no way I'd come down that middle. I wouldn't ever go in there again. You got bedding right there. And then bedding up where we come in, remember? I'm telling you, all you'd have to do, cause you're right-handed, your stand's here, all you'd have to do is go like this. Flop. They're coming up through here. Have you seen me shoot? Have you, have you seen me shoot? What do you mean? You think I'm hitting a buck standing here? I'd start hanging out on this side of the property, dude. By the time we made it to the southwest part of that property, saw some good sign, we passed some good deer bedding, we decided to set up another tree stand location 
just a little more than 75 yards to the west of where we saw all that bedding. And we also put a trail camera in between that bedding and where his stand location is. That same evening, he was getting pictures of deer on the east side of the property, and he was getting pictures of bucks on that southwest part of the property. We had already figured out the best location to be to get a good opportunity at one of those bucks. The first day of our tree season, his first sit in the tree stand, his first hunt ever, he had two nice bucks come in. Smaller buck came in first, and wasn't even 10 minutes later, a bigger buck come up from the south side of the property, following the smaller buck, come right into that scrape and just started tearing it up. Now this scenario could have played out a lot different if he had had a little more experience. Now the way he was sitting in the tree and the way that buck came in from right in front of him and come off to his right side, he's right handed. So he had his bow here on the right side and for him to get a shot he would have had to turn to the right and come up and shoot. As soon as he saw that buck coming up from the south, about 40 yards away, he should have already been standing up with the bow in his hand, ready to go. But I think what he was doing was he was waiting for that buck to get a little more further to his right so he'd get a quartering shot, which makes sense. But all in all, I can understand why he would freeze, why he'd be so nervous. Imagine going out into the woods your first time, you're sitting in your tree stand for the first time, and you have your first big buck come in. It's pretty nerve wracking. But by the time that buck got far enough to his right so he could get a quarter shot, he didn't have a shot, it was too late. <laughs> 